Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another reaction video. We got five football players that played in the wrong era, part two. Let's check this out. With the success of the last and wrong era video, I decided to make a part two. Shout out to my boy Jalen. Just hit 1K. Subscribers, and maybe by the time of this video release, I will be at a thousand. Yes, sir. Congrats, bro. Very much deserved. The first player I want to mention is a player that was commented under a lot in the last Randall video. Cunningham. Cunningham. If you didn't know, Randall Cunningham was one Damn. of the original dual threat quarterbacks. Yes, sir. And just like Doug Flutie in the last video, the problem is, is that he was a quarterback during the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. When the dual threat quarterback was in his style, is more of the pocket passer. Not only was Randall Cunningham a dual threat quarterback, he was also black, which if you know, during the 80s, it wasn't many black quarterbacks. Yeah. And this would be a problem early on for Randall Cunningham, and this was even before he got to the NFL. When Cunningham was looking for a college to commit to, he originally wanted to go to USC, but at the time, USC didn't want a black quarterback. Since Damn, he was from Cali, he was cool. close to home, so he decided on UNLV. And with the Rebels, he would put up great stats as he had over 8,000 yards, 59 touchdowns, and just 29 interceptions in his UNLV career. Okay. Side note, I did not know this before researching for the video, but he also played punter at UNLV. Cunningham oh, word? The draft and then pick in the second round with the 37th overall I pick know that the Philadelphia Eagles. In Cunningham's first two seasons with the Eagles, it wasn't really nothing to talk about. But from the year of 1987 to 1990, Randall Cunningham would stamp himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. In that time frame, Cunningham would throw for over 13,000 yards, 98 touchdowns, and just 56 interceptions. Okay. And on the ground, Cunningham would rush for over 2,000 yards and 18 touchdowns. Also in that time frame, he finished second in MVP voting twice, and he was just simply amazing out there, making defenders miss, he could make every throw. Like, bro, imagine oh. Randall Cunningham and, you know what I'm saying, this day and age and, and um, quarterbacks and shit. Bro, th this nigga would be damn near unstoppable. <laughs> he probably would have been better than Lamar Jackson, bro. Let's keep it a buck. Like, this nigga, like, I'm a Boston Ravens fan, but, like, bro, this nigga would have been unstoppable, like, come on now. He was now. one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but he was just one of the best players in the league. There was only one problem, and that was the playoffs. In his first three playoff appearances from 88 to 90, he would combine for zero passing touchdowns but five interceptions. The 1991 season would come to an abrupt end for Cunningham as he would tear his ACL. Yikes. Now, he would be able to come back in 92 and win Comeback Player of the Year with a solid season, okay. but he was never the same after that injury. Damn. After that ACL injury, he would spend just four more seasons with the Eagles, but you can tell he wasn't the same quarterback. His athleticism and his speed just wasn't there anymore. That's what torn the ACLs can do to players, bro. Announced his retirement, but he will return in 1997 with the Minnesota Vikings. Mm -hmm. In 1998, Cunningham would show he still has some left in the tank as he started Randy Moss. games that season. In 98, Cunningham would throw for over 3,700 yards and 34 touchdowns and just 10 interceptions. Sadly, the season came to an end in an NFC Championship game where they lost 30 to 27. Yeah. After this, Cunningham would spend three more years in the league with the Vikings, Cowboys, and the Ravens. Now, of course, Cunningham was good back in the 80s and the 90s, but he would have really fit in in this era. Facts. He was able to extend plays with his legs. Not only that, he was able to run Damn. for lots of yardage. And on top of that, he had a great arm. Oh, uh, Cordell Patterson. Yes. Yes, bro. This was this is mine from the last video from um the part one. Cordell Patterson for sure. The second guy I want to mention is Cordell Patterson. Shout out to young DJ Reacts for giving me this idea. Yes, bro. sir. For the past couple years, Patterson has been used as a running back, wide receiver, return man, and appreciate it, bro. Defense. Growing up, though, Patterson was mainly a wide receiver and a return specialist. Patterson would go the Juco route going to Hutchinson Community College, where he would play wide receiver, but he would also play running back some there. His first year, he only had seven carries there, but his second year, he would have 32 carries for 379 yards. I also feel the need to mention that he was good as a wide receiver and a return man in those two years as well. After those two years of Juco, he would go to Tennessee where in his only year there, he would have 25 rushing attempts for 308 yards. To end his college career, he would have 706 rushing yards, 2600 receiving yards, and 1800 returning yards. Damn. Patterson would forego his senior season at Tennessee and he would be selected in the NFL draft by the Vikings with the 29 overall pick. In college, Patterson was used as a running back, wide receiver, and return man, but in the NFL, he would just be used as a wide receiver and a return man, at least for the first couple of years of his career. His four seasons in Minnesota was underwhelming as he didn't have over 500 receiving yards in any season, and he didn't really get many rushing attempts. After a couple years in Minnesota, he would go to Oakland, where he wouldn't really do much there either as a receiver or running back. 
in his years in Minnesota and his one year in Oakland, he would see at most 13 carries in a season. Now what kept him in the league is his ability as a return specialist. Yeah. Through those years, he had 4,600 return yards and five Doesn't touchdowns. he have the record for After most touchdowns years, as a returner? with the Patriots, and it would actually work out for him. You know, the most kick return touchdowns? The first team to really utilize him as a running back as they gave him 42 carries, and he rushed for 228 yards. He would also have over 600 yards in return yards and one touchdown. He will also help the Patriots win the Super Bowl, and I believe after this season is when many teams were like, hey, maybe we've been using this guy really wrong. After spending one season with the Patriots and helping them win the Super Bowl, he would go to the Chicago Bears, where in his first year, he wouldn't really get many rushing attempts. Wow. Patterson's second year, he would have 64 rushing attempts and 232 yards. Spending just two years in Chicago, he would then move on to Atlanta, where he would basically be moved to a full-time running back and return specialist. His first two years on the Falcons, he would have over 290 rushing attempts, 4 1,300 yards, and 14 rushing touchdowns. Now, last season, Patterson wasn't really used as a running back because they had B. John Robertson and Tyler Algier. Yeah. With Patterson turning 33 this upcoming season, his career is probably finna end really soon due to his age and him playing running back. I believe if Patterson was drafted between 2020 and 2024, he would be used a lot differently to start his career. For sure. He probably would have been. Like, bro, imagine this nigga in the um in the Niners system, bro. Oh, my God. Back wide receiver and return specialist for his yeah. entire career. Rondell Stewart on the run. It's a foot race. He's going to win it to the end zone. The next guy we're talking about is Cordell Stewart, who was okay. a quarterback slash wide receiver slash running back huh it wasn't always this way though it's my first time hearing colorado about this dude college he was playing quarterback while at colorado Stewart passed for over six thousand passing yards and 33 touchdowns and just 19 interceptions okay now, Stewart into the draft where he was picked in the second round with the 60th overall pick and he probably would have been drafted in the first round if he would have agreed to change positions to a wide receiver or running back but he wanted to be a quarterback now in his first two years, he would barely be used as a quarterback as he was mainly a wide receiver and running back. Now the 1997 season was kind of the turning point for Stewart as he would be named the starting quarterback and he would throw for over 3,000 yards and 21 touchdowns. On the downside though, he would have 19 interceptions to go along with those 21 touchdowns, but he would lead the Steelers to an 11-5 record in the AFC Championship game. Okay. The season would end for Stewart on a sour note as he would have three interceptions in the AFC Championship game and Damn. have one fumble and the Steelers would lose 24-21. Yikes. Stewart did not have the same juice in the 98 season as he had 2,500 yards, 11 passing touchdowns, and 18 interceptions, and the Steelers would go 79. The 99 season was similar as the Steelers missed the playoffs again and Stewart threw 10 interceptions to just six touchdowns. Stewart wouldn't get the starting quarterback spot back until the 2001 season. In that 2001 season, Stewart would have over 3,000 passing yards, 14 passing touchdowns, and he would lead the Steelers to a 13-3 record. Okay. Actually, not only would he lead the Steelers to a 13-3 record, he would actually lead them back to the AFC Championship. And Stewart was having a good game until the fourth quarter where he threw two interceptions and they would lose to the Patriots. Damn. He would start in the 2002 season, but in the third game against the Cleveland Browns, he would throw a pick into double coverage and he was pulled. After that season, Stewart was signed with Chicago where he spent one year, then he was signed with Baltimore for two years and then retired. Now, the reason why I say he played in the wrong air is because he either would have been a full-time quarterback or a full-time receiver now. Now, his numbers when he played mainly wide receiver were okay, and this was in his first two years. In his first year, Stewart would have 17 interceptions for 293 yards, and in his second year, he would have 14 receptions for 235 yards. I don't know if he would have been a quarterback in this area because he was turnover prone, but I think at wide receiver, he would be able to work. And maybe at quarterback, just maybe he'd be able to work. But I do think- Like may area, maybe like, I feel like maybe, um, you know how they be doing like trick plays with wide receivers, throwing the ball and shit. I feel like he would have been the perfect fit for that. Have a more defined role. Okay, Saquon. The second to last pair we're going to talk about is Saquon Barkley. If you don't know, Saquon is one of the better running backs in football today. He possesses some great abilities as a running back as he can break. I feel like the Giants tackles, didn't really know how to use him like that. The, the only problem with Barkley is the fact that he's a running back in the year 2024. Running backs today are seen as replaceable by many franchises. Yeah. Unless your name is Christian McCaffrey or Derrick Henry, the team that draft you is probably not paying you a big amount of money or a team in free agency is probably not paying you a big amount of money. Matter of fact, the team that drafted you is probably drafting a running back a couple years later, and he's probably going to be able to replace you. The Giants didn't draft Saquon's replacement, but they did refuse to pay him. But I also feel like That's Saquon tough. is in the wrong ear because of the amount of carries he gets. 
Saquon has had over 200 carries basically every season that he's healthy, but compare that to the running backs of the 2000s like LaDainian Tomlinson, Thomas Jones, LT. Tiki Barber, Adrian Peterson, and even Willie Parker had multiple seasons with 300 plus carries. Damn. And I believe if Saquon played in the 2000s, he would have multiple seasons with 300 plus rushing attempts. On top of that, he would be valued more and paid more in the 2000s as a running back. Yeah. Now, a player you probably haven't heard of is Lenny Moore. If you don't nah. know, Lenny Moore was a running back for the Baltimore Colts in the late 50s and for most of the 60s. For his career, Lenny Moore will rush for over 5,100 yards, and he will actually finish his career with more receiving yards than rushing yards, having 6,000 receiving yards. Okay. In NFL history, there has only been two running backs that have caught for over 900 receiving yards in two seasons. Those guys being Marshall Falk in 98 and 99. Then you got Lenny Moore in 58 and in 60. He also has the most 50 plus yard rushing touchdowns with that number being 26. And if you look at his numbers, he only had three seasons where he had over 100 rushing attempts. And of course, if he played in any other era after the 60s, he would have way more rushing attempts. And I believe with his ability as a pass catcher and a runner, he will fit right in with this era. So that's players that played in the wrong era part two. Most players on this list play ahead of their time. And I know it's other guys like Matt Forte, Deion Sanders, Megatron, Barry Sanders. But maybe some of those players be mentioned in a later video. Yeah. But that's it. Until next time, I'm out. Peace. Hey, man. W for as always, Jalen. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Turn on post notifications and notify whenever I drop another banger video. One to wrote a third to sell. So there for more banger NFL content like this. And without further ado, I'm out. Gang! Yeah.